Hello guys and welcome to Just Women Africa. My name is Ola Lekon Amosa, the founder of Just Women Africa. Before we start the show, do not forget to hit the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment at the end of every show. Uh, tell a friend who knows a friend about Just Women Africa. Um, today we would like to thank our hosts, Thea Coffee Shop at Airport of the Patricia Lumber Road. Right, they have a great scenery. You want to come for um, lunch, dinner, you want to bring your friends out, just relax, a place to relax. Thea Coffee Shop is the place to be. We also like to thank Holy Kumbacha, purely organic drink, good for your health. Um, you can check them up on Instagram. I'll be leaving the details be below in the comments um, section where you can um, place some orders. It's really, really good. I've tried it. Trust me, you want to get yourself some. Today, we have the privilege on having the show the top five female photograph, female filmmaker slash photographer in Ghana, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And thank you for coming to the show, Kafri. Thank you for having <laughs> me. I've, I've heard so much about you. I've been really privileged to meet you in person. Okay. I've read so much about your story. It's been years before we got started chatting on um, Facebook. Yeah. And it's nice to have you on the show. Same here. All right. Nice All right, so can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? OK. Um, my name is Marcel Dadewachi, brand name is Kafri Priest. I'm a Ghana-based photographer and filmmaker. Um, yeah, and I'm married, so yeah, I think that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Alright, so I mean, okay, now you're a filmmaker, I know you do more, a lot more filmmaking, but mm -hmm. initially before you started doing filmmaking, you were doing photography. Yeah. Um, tell us about your journey in photography. Why did you decide to do photography? Okay, my photography um, journey started with passion. I started taking pictures with my phone for the love of it. It made me feel good, it made me feel... I just felt happy anytime I took pictures. And even before taking the pictures, I would go to photo studio, photo stores to be precise, and take like sixty pictures of myself after I had this work, just to reward myself, because I felt pictures were, was one way to see myself a way I didn't see myself. Okay. So it felt so good. So that drew me to drew me to photography, and from there, I started getting behind the camera, and people started paying. They wanted to pay for me to come in and do what I do for myself for them. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay. So I started doing it for the love of it. I realized I could actually make money. People were willing to pay for it. So. That was how it became a business. That's how it became a business. Yeah. All right. So, um, you go under the, the, the um, brand name Kafri Praise. Yeah. How did you come about the name Kafri? I'm okay. We know your name is Kafri, but where from the praise? Okay. Kafri is not my name. Oh, Kafri is not Okay. <laughs> so, is so, not my name. So, okay, so, how come Kafri? Kafri Praise. Okay. The name was birthed out of my love for music. Okay. Um, music was my first love. So, Kafri means praise in a way. Okay. So Kafui is the same translation of praise in English. Ewe in English, Kafui praise. Oh, okay. So anytime I, he I hear the name praise, it reminds me of my love for music and my desire and her desire to always praise God through songs. Mm -hmm. That was the reason I chose the name. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't even for photography or anything. This was way before photography started. Way before photography. Way years before photography. Okay, for our international viewers, Ewe is a tribe in Ghana mm -hmm. from the Volta region on the east coast. East, right? Yeah, so Ghana map, yeah. So. Volta's on the east. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, so from the Volta region, and mm -hmm. uh, once you're referring to Ewe, it is from the Volta region. Yeah. So that's how you came out with the name Kafu yeah. So what is your name? Is your name Kafu My name, my birth name is Matilda Dubachi. So Kafu Praise is the brand name. Oh wow, yeah. it's a really interesting brand name. I know. Because <laughs> I heard of Cafe Praise for a really long time. Yeah, many people don't know Matilda, but they know the Cafe Praise. Okay, so how many years have you been, have you been a, were you a professional uh, photographer before you started filmmaking? Okay, before I started filmmaking, I have been doing photography for five years. Okay. Um, yeah, and filmmaking for two years. Really? Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> interesting. All right, so of course, so when you started off, what were some of the challenges with uh, photography when you started? Did people take you seriously as a woman? <laughs> I've, I've come to the point where I've grown out of like 
at first I used to really talk about it and make a lot of noise about it but it got to a point I'm like hey people if um, the funny thing is if they have a guy photographer mm -hmm. and a female photographer mm -hmm. many tend to believe without even seeing the works mm -hmm. that the guy is way better will be good mm -hmm. than the lady okay because they, there's this stereotypes um, in Africa to be precise or in Ghana mm -hmm. to be precise um, in the Western countries you don't have those problems mm -hmm. but here people tend to think men tend to deliver more or better okay. than women what helps me is um, social media okay me putting my works out there me showing people what I can do and taking them through my journey as I go along the way. Mm -hmm. they, they see what I can do. So even before a client will book me, they know why they are booking me. Mm -hmm. And they know what they will get. Mm -hmm. So it is the people who are around that client that are, who may see me for the first time yeah. that may have doubts. But in the end, the work speaks for itself. Okay. So that's one thing I keep telling my fellow ladies that you don't always have to make noise that they don't give women opportunities and stuff like that. Build yourself. Be so good at what you do that you can't be denied. I mean, when you step into the room, it's obvious that you are here. I like that. I, I, like that. <laughs> I, I, I want my works to speak for, for my... For, I want my works to speak for itself. And not me making noise. So you hardly see me making noise. Uh, women, gender equality. Mm -mm. Okay. The skill will speak for itself. Wow. Okay, so basically over the years, that's what you've been able to do to get the way um, craft yeah. criticism internationally, not just in Ghana. Yeah. Right. yeah. Even before then, when I, when I was um, playing around photography with the phone, mm -hmm. I got a booking from Norway. Was that your first gig? My first gig. All the way from Norway? Ah. How did that happen? <laughs> Tell us about it. Facebook. Facebook. Social media has, that's why when people are messing up on social media, I, 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 I really feel sorry for them. Okay. Because you have your potential client, your next boss is on social media watching the kind of posts you make. On social media, I just started sharing, my um, a sister at church was having a wedding. Mm -hmm. I, I knew nothing about it. So I had this phone, Samsung phone, that um, usually the camera pops out, K-Zoom. Okay. So I went to get that phone because of the photograph. So anytime I, I want to shoot the camera, I will shoot out and I okay. feel so good about it. <laughs> so I used that phone to shoot the entire wedding. But I wasn't the there was a main photographer. Okay. And I was just playing around with it. I was so passionate and shooting everything. Turns out my pictures rather stood out more than the main, main photographer's pictures. Wow, that's amazing. And f I just started sharing those pictures and then this, cl this friend of mine who was a friend of Facebook saw the pictures and he said, do I have a professional camera? And I said, no. And he said, I should try and get a professional camera and that I'll shoot his wedding in a few months' time. Got in my head. I started moving out of scared. <laughs> what camera am I going to buy? When am I going to learn how to operate the camera, editing? I'm like, oh God, am I good? I'm, I was so tense. But one thing um, that helps me is when someone believes in me mm -hmm. and sticks out for me, I want to go the extra mile to prove them right. Okay. So because of his faith in me, I, I, I went the extra mile to get the camera in that short time, learn how to operate the camera and then how to edit. In fact, that first wedding, I edited it five times. Really? <laughs> because the first one wasn't good. As, and anytime I, one thing I do is, anytime I edit, I come to a pro to have a look at it and then show me where the mistakes are. So once I get the corrections, I go back and then do everything all over again, come back again. I mean, so I was doing that because I wanted to give him good work. Mm -hmm. And he loved it. So oh, it paid off. And that birthed the whole thing. Okay, I can be paid for this. And he paid me really well. So that's nice. What year was that? That was 2015. 15, 2015. Six, years ago. Yeah. Okay. That was oh. like a few months I, into photography. Also. Like, I was like less than six months old in photography. Well, so since that shit, you've come up with other... Yeah. Um, more clients got on board. Mm -hmm. and so from one wedding to the other... I think I've shot over how many weddings? It should be over 50 weddings. Yeah, so much that I, I started feeling like it's the same thing over and over right again. Yeah. So I wanted something more. No. So that's when I moved into filmmaking. Okay, so you, you mentioned that you wanted something more. Mm -hmm. That brings up the next question. So I was going through your prof portfolio mm -hmm. and I noticed that you have done a lot of filmmaking these days, less photography. What has 
made the shift where I moved from photography mm -hmm. to to filmmaking. You just mentioned that you wanted something more, but I'm sure with that you also wanted those other things mm -hmm. that made you pull you from <laughs> photography to filmmaking. Okay. Um the reason I added filmmaking to the photography, I haven't left the photography. <laughs> I still do photography, so guys, book me. <laughs> <laughs> book her, book her. <laughs> book me. Um, I realized, um, I, I think around 2018, 2017, 2018, there are about, I started um, feeling, I don't know, I, I just started getting laid back. Okay. I didn't. I didn't post my pictures anymore. I didn't share my works. I didn't feel like doing it. Well, what was going on with you? Were you depressed I don't know. Or you just yeah, felt kind of. It was like this creative block. I don't feel inspired again to. Well, what killed inspiration? I, I don't know. It's like the same thing over and over and over again. It's one wedding. Wedding is the same process over, over again, over again. So in it, what I do is I always travel outside Ghana. Okay. No, not outside Ghana outside Accra okay. to see other places and then that inspires me so anytime I get that creative block I travel okay. around to get fresh uh, fresh views and then come back and feel inspired but at a point I realized it, it was, was just the same thing again. I wanted I needed a change I didn't think of filmmaking because I knew it was very difficult okay but um, I decided to hey what was there to lose it's free the mm -hmm. training was free then Mm -hmm. It was a workshop um, with World Film. It was a German company. So I decided to take the opportunity to go for the training, okay. not knowing what the outcome would be. Indeed. But I'm, I'm really glad. That you did the film. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So what year was that? To that, start? that was 2018. 2018? Yeah, it started 2018. So I started as a trainee. Then, and I drew to the DOP aspect of filmmaking, which is the um, director of photography, handling okay. of the camera. Okay. And I realized many women shy away from that because they felt it was the legwork of filmmaking, <laughs> handling the camera and then all that. They go to the directing and editing aspect of film. Most of them go there. Okay. But I felt like, hey, I want where many people where the action are not. Is. Where the action <laughs> is. So I moved to that side. But um, after the first year of training, I realized as a, as a DOP, you don't own the film. You don't? You, you, you don't. No, if you, are, if you don't direct the film, you don't own the film. If you don't produce the film, you don't own the film. If you, the producer or the director mm -hmm. have an upper hand than the director of photography. Okay. Yeah. So I realized that and I, as much as I would love to shoot for other people, I want to own my works. I want to be, I want, I want to be seen. Mm -hmm. So I realized, okay, aside from this deal, the next year, I'm, I'm going to learn directing and do directing. So I, that's what I did. The next year, I came on as a trainer. I studied directing documentaries and directed a documentary in the northern region where I took um, um, trainees from Sierra Leone, um, the Gambia, um, Liberia to the north. Okay. So I was supposed to train them and help them experience a part of Ghana they've not seen before. So I took them to the north and then we shot that documentary and that was my first um, professional documentary film out there. That was in 2019. What, what was it called? Redemption. Redemption, okay. Yeah, it's on YouTube so I'll give you the link. Alright. So from there I think I've shot, I've shot three, between the space of two, three years, I've shot three gospel music videos. Okay. Um, I've done I've lost count of the documentary films and I've done. I'm sure you've done it. I'll look at your profile. There's so quite many. A lot of them. I can't even there's keep count. so many. I think there's so many. I've lost count of them. I love documentary filmmaking because um, I get to tell real life stories. Um, I, I love telling real life stories of people's real life experiences, not mm -hmm. more like um, fictional stuff. Mm -hmm. I love the documentary aspect. So that's the area I am. Um, mastering now or i work more now helping people tell their real life stories and corporate institutions telling their stories okay so can, okay that's fantastic um so the challenges with with, with photography is it, most, is it the same challenges you're facing with <laughs> filmmaking or do they differ they differ what are the, what are some of the differences i mean i can, i've come to realize that photography is it's, it's more like a, a starter <laughs> more like a a startup, 
to un okay let me i'm trying to find a better word for it no for me it's more like a game mm -hmm. but filmmaking is is so packed and tough there's always something to do if you make one least mistake in one side it will affect the other it's a chain of um we are, yeah a chain of inputs from different departments that if you miss one side you miss the other the directing aspect of filmmaking the producing aspect of filmmaking creative directing aspect of filmmaking um the editing the color grading i mean conceptualization alone it's a filmmaking is it's a whole town on its own with different branches you can't just master one and leave the other even as a director you need to know um your way around everything okay to be able to get people to do what you need them to do when you need them to do it and how you want them to do it to get what you need so mm. that's what i've come to learn about filmmaking so far yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. so of course um as a filmmaker mm -hmm. i mean filmmaking i know is heavily dominated by, by male yeah uh so how do you find your way around that do they take you seriously when you come on set <laughs> or did they say oh Sit down there, we'll do the work for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll carry the item for you. Oh, that camera is heavy for you, we'll, we'll carry it for you. <laughs> when you see me on set, you even think that I am I'm rather um, an assistant than the director. Okay. Because I'm a hands-on person. I'm carrying this, I'm doing that, I'm, I'm making sure I'm serving this person food. I'm, I'm doing everything to make sure that the production, I mean, it happens the way I want it to happen. I don't mind just that if the role is going to take me away from my space and what I have to do, I avoid it. So I, I, I don't mind carrying things. I've been carrying my heavy stuff five years ago. Is it now? No, I don't mind. I don't mind carrying stuff. Unless there's someone assigned to do it and the person will do it. If the person will not, then I, I'm always there. Okay. I'm, I, ma I make sure I get it done. I don't mind. I don't mind. Load is not a problem for me. Okay. But with filmmaking, the good thing is there are people you always bring on board mm -hmm. to make things easier. So even though I'm directing and slash DOP, I make sure there's a second um, assistant for directing and DOP. And there is a, a jib guy, there's the behind the scene photographer, there is someone handling art directing. Mm -hmm. And even before all that, a lot of planning, a lot of producing goes into the preparation. So everyone knows what they have to do. I deal with them individually mm -hmm. on the concept I have in mind. Then we conceptualize it on paper mm -hmm. and in preparation, set design and all that. So when we get on set, everyone knows their role they are playing and then it makes things easier. Okay. And that's interesting. Uh, hello guys, you're still watching Just From Africa. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Do not forget to leave a like and leave a comment. Uh, tell your friend who knows a friend about Just From Africa. And we have this favorite, really organic drink with us. It's really nutritious. Holy kombucha. I'll put in the details below the comments. You can make, place your order. And it's really, really good. It's really, really healthy. It boosts your immune system. And I take it and I'll advise you to make some other. I um, also like to thank Thea Coffee House at the airport for giving us a lovely place to shoot our videos. And today on the show we have Kafu Praise, Ghana's top five filmmakers. Uh, <laughs> 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 I, don't right. I just love being called film. Even though I started with photography, anytime I, the film I get, I, I love it. I just, it inspires me more. Yeah. Right. That's good. Cool. All right. So. You've been doing um, filmmaking for a while now. Can you tell us some of your clients you worked with? I know quite recently you worked with the um, Dutch Prime Minister. Yeah. He was in Ghana. Yeah. And I know that you've shot a, f a documentary yeah. for them. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, can you tell us any other... Okay. Um, I've done many projects for Oxfam UK, um, Farmerline, let me see, Stack Ghana. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to record them. Okay, I've shot three music videos for Carvis Hammond, um, HR, and then Michaelina. Okay. I don't know them. Um, uh, documentary, documentary, documentary. Okay, I've shot an advert for Farmerline. I've said that already. Um, three Ports Logistics. Um, 
<laughs> uh -huh, um, CDF Canada. Mm -hmm. um, aside from the Dutch, um, the Embassy of Denmark, um, the documentary for the Prime Minister's two days visit to Ghana. Yeah. Um, and I think I'll well, you're, count. You're, you're rolling with the big <laughs> boys. <laughs> I'm trying to recall. Yeah, Aga Khan Awards for one of the awardees in Ghana. So I think I, sh I shot a documentary for her too. Mm. It's, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm trying to like... I guess it, that, that's really impressive. Your profile is really, really impressive. Thank you. Really, really Thank impressive. You. Okay, so... Um, yeah, and MasterCard too. Yeah. Oh, you did for MasterCard? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's nice. It was a documentary they were working on in Ghana. Okay. So the filmmaker came from Mauritius for seven days. Okay. And wanted a local filmmaker to um, assist. So I was on board as an assistant for the production for that seven days. We traveled to the north for five days or so. Okay. To shoot there and then back in Accra to, for two days. Okay. Okay, that's nice. So what's the future for Kafri Praise and her filmmaking? Kafri Praise, the future. She will own a media empire. Wow. A big one of that. By God's grace. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> um, with that media empire, it would have a school where we train fellow females. I don't know. I'm more... I have females at heart. I would love to see more females in this space. Mm -hmm. Serious females. Serious. Who are focused in this field. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to train more of them and um, I think uh, aside from the school and the media empire, I will be or I am, will be <laughs> one of these, <laughs> one of the best, um, I, I will, entrepreneurship in other fields, exports and imports, guru, I'm looking at branching into other fields of business, so aside from filmmaking, multiple streams of income, real estate, um, export imports in various fields here. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. That's the future plan. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I know you did uh, a little bit of photography and filmmaking and I know that as a filmmaker, everybody, do you remember your first camera? Yeah. Do you still have it? <laughs> I sold it. <laughs> you sold it? Oh, why? Uh, what was I, it? Was I it wanted was to it upgrade. Canon? It was a Canon 700D. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I shot some of my best images with that camera. I mean, it was one of the award-winning images I shot. So with that, I won the Ghana Startup Awards for Arts, Culture and Tourism 2016. Mm -hmm. I was using that camera. So it, it felt really good. And Charlie, anytime I see that camera, I just smile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but why you shouldn't have sold it? Well, well, well. Or you want to pass the glory on to somebody else? Kind of. And also, I wanted to upgrade. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to upgrade to a full frame. It's a crop sensor. Okay. So I wanted to upgrade to a full frame, and then so I needed the money to top up and get a um, 6D then. Mm -hmm. So that was what I did. I got a 6D. Then I had a Sony. Before I also moved to mirrorless, that's the Sony A7 III. Yeah. And my next target is the um, Sony FX6. Okay. That's around $5,000. Yeah. Okay, I know you've been around Ghana, you've been around the whole of Ghana shooting pictures, doing the film documentaries. Do you have any priceless pictures or filmmaking that when you sit back, mm. you go like, like, which you're not paid for, but when you sit back, you just think and go like, wow, those were really <laughs> images you, nobody has seen, but you just keep to yourself. <laughs> well, if I say nobody has seen, it will be a lie. People have seen it all right. I share them because of the impact it gives me myself and it's an, it's, these images are images I shot in the north, my first time going to the north. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see the north. You know, my mom was very protective, so okay. she never allowed us to go out. Okay. So when I finally moved out of my uncle's place, I had the freedom to roam everywhere. Oh God. And I decided to roam. If I had the money, I'm sure I'd still be roaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. So um, the north was the first place I wanted to see. I went to the central, the eastern, the northern part. And on my way to Mole Forest um, Reserve, National Reserve, I 
these kids were coming back from school mm -hmm. so they thought I had something for them they st so when the taxi slowed down I wanted to shoot the north differently in a way that um, no one has ever seen so I decided to shoot through the side view mirror of the car yeah so in, I shot my images through that mirror. Okay. So anything I saw in the mirror, I shot it. I shot it. So these kids were running after the car, thinking that I had something for them. Okay. So they they stretched for their hands to tag the taxi that I was in. Okay. So you could see them running, and back then their uniform was this tattered, and then they walked barefooted and all that. So you see the kids running, trying to touch the car. So that image I named it "Chasing the Moving Dream." Okay. We all have dreams, and they wanted to just touching the car was their dream then. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, and that image, even though I wasn't paid for it, it's one of the most um, chased after image that people want to purchase really? and have purchased from me. Wow! Seriously, I'll would, I'll would, I'll share it with you. Oh, that's and nice. I, an image that anytime someone sees it, they're inspired, and people have bought that image from me frames i usually do exhibitions of my artworks from yeah, time yeah. to time so anytime i do exhibitions and i frame these images they buy them okay so it's the most sought after and most bought images image of mine so far and that image led me to filmmaking mm -hmm. i there was one girl in there who was sitting and holding her under her feet not knowing she was barefooted i was just oh. focused on shooting anything and everything okay that I didn't pay attention to the image until I got to Accra and editing the image. Then I saw that the girl was tired. Her face looked so tired and then her hands were under her feet. And when I shared it, it went viral. Oh. Good and bad. Our Ghanaians were bashing me. I'm embarrassing Ghana, a whole lot of stuff. But foreigners were rather inspired and that this girl would strive for education to walk miles barefooted. Mm -hmm. And a lot of questions were asked, why didn't I buy the shoe? Why didn't I drop the girl? But there were over 20 kids around there. I couldn't pick her and then leave the rest. Okay. And I was going in the opposite direction. So I decided, I paid a taxi driver to search for the girl. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Whilst in Accra, I called the taxi driver who took me around okay. to roam the village and search for that girl. Because I felt I owed it to her to make it right. Mm -hmm. So, and when he finally found the girl after some few days, I sent him money to buy shoes for the girl. Oh, that's nice. So that um, she can wear shoes to school. So that I can share that image to show people that I'm not only interested in showing the bad side of things, but I want to be the change they speak of or I speak of. So the, girl, the guy bought the shoes for the girl, sent me pictures, and I shared it on this same social media. It didn't go viral. <laughs> it did not it go, go viral. viral. Wow. The bad one went viral. The good one didn't go viral. Oh, I said, okay, this is life. Bad news sells. Of course. Good news doesn't okay. sell. But I didn't mind. I felt I could do more. Mm -hmm. So I made a poster with the girl's picture and raised, searching for more shoes for the kids because there were more kids who were boy barefooted. Mm -hmm. And um, um and a, f a friend shared it on his wall and a philanthropist who had a lot of Tom's shoes, brand new Tom's shoes, mm -hmm. gave me 370 brand new shoes from Tom's. Wow. Yeah. From Tom's Do for the case. his name? Yeah. Um, Donald Ward. Donald Ward. Big up, Donald Ward. Thank, thank you very much. Really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So that was for two schools and an orphanage. Okay. I was able to get two schools and an orphanage there. And now I have to fund transporting the shoes to the north on my, my own. On your own. With my photography, small money. <laughs> <laughs> Did I even have money then? But I was so eager and happy to do this that I tried soliciting any money I can make, any coins everywhere, any shoots I would get. Any. So I managed to save up a bit and then went through um, public transport. Mm -hmm. That was with um, S VIP. Yeah, so I moved all the shoes into sacks. Okay. And then sold it, two big sacks. And then into the VIP, then heading towards Damongo. Mm -hmm. no. On our way, midnight, mm -hmm. we had an accident. Whoa. Hmm. The car was trying to dodge another accident on the road. Okay. And ended up veering into some bush. See, even Muslims were calling Jesus. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I was just sitting there, like, hey. 
But the amazing thing was that even though I was shaking, my camera was the first thing I picked. Oh. And I shot everything. <laughs> I took pictures. And then it was just pictures I was doing. So I took pictures of everything. I, I don't know. <laughs> I was shaking. I was like, it was like I was shaking, but I wanted to show people what I've been through. So it was like graph pictures of the scene of everything, how it looked. Thank God no one was hurt. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know for the other car that already had the accident. So things like that, yeah. And finally, we got to the junction, and I called this same taxi driver to come and pick me with the shoes, and ended up losing this my K Zoom phone. 2003. I bought that phone 2003 in 2015. Wow. 2015. I lost this phone. How did but it was part of the accident? It flew somewhere or something. The, I, don't, I, I don't even know. I, don't, I I couldn't process like how it happened. Because that dawn, a lot of things happened aside from the accident and then trying to move the shoes, trying to wait for the transport. It was, it was at dawn. So I just realized the phone was nowhere to be found. And I couldn't blame the taxi driver. Uh, I felt really down because I wanted to do this to help these kids. Mm -hmm. No one was paying me for this. And only to lose the only thing I used my last salary to buy That's from cool. the mining <laughs> when I was resigning. I, it felt like a piece of me. But I just focused on um, meeting the kids with the shoes and then they were so happy. What happened was the girl's school, the girl whose picture I used, mm -hmm. I went to a school, made sure every kid in the school got a shoe and an orphanage close to them, made sure every kid there also got a, um, a shoe and there's a, another school also, every kid there got a shoe, a brand new shoe. And um, I took the girl to the same location I saw her, mm -hmm. where she sat. And this time she was, you could see the change in her appearance. She was so happy. Her smile was priceless. Nice. And she was in a better shoe now. And then she crossed her leg the same way she was. I made her, I made her pose the same way she was when I took that picture. Yeah. So I had the old picture and the new picture just positioned Definitely each other too. for people to see the change that people can make if they should just take a step in extra mile. And through that, um, the owner of the orphanage was the person I went back to the documentary on mm -hmm. when I studied filmmaking. Mm -hmm. So through one picture, there has been ripple effect of stories. For me, most of the documentaries I do are birthed from pictures I take. Okay. The second documentary was also birthed from another picture somewhere else. Okay. So it's like pictures always strikes a stories, a ripple effect of something for me to tell. So that's my northern story and most impactful image i have taken so far yeah oh that's really impressive i mean that's really <laughs> a nice story to hear for 2022 <laughs> and then god bless you for what you did thank you and uh but god restored restored yes. yeah a few months i think jobs came in and out in and out and i bought the phone again so okay all right we're about to wrap up all right, so you guys are still watching Just From In Africa, and don't forget to subscribe button, tell your friend who knows a friend about Just From In Africa. And um, we have this lovely drink with us Woli Kumbacha, really organic, good for you, good for your immune system. I drink it. I, I encourage you to go to the stores and buy it. You can get onto the um, Facebook page and make your orders. And today we have um, with us one of Ghana's top five female filmmakers in the country. Photographer and photographer, <laughs> and none other than Kafri Praise. All right, and she's been telling us her story from when she started to now. Okay, um, in life, people go like, if, if I had gone to school, I wouldn't have done this, I wouldn't have done that, um, I wouldn't have done this course, I should have done this course, I should have done this, maybe I should have done. If you were to start all over again, you need to photography and filmmaking again. I'll take it in a heartbeat. I think I'll start it earlier than I did. I didn't study filmmaking in school. It was straightforward. Mm -hmm. I studied in school. <laughs> so filmmaking was birthed out of passion and YouTube videos. I watch a lot of photography, f YouTube videos and stuff like that. Then I started to take training courses on it. Mm -hmm. And I think that birthed the whole thing. Yeah. Birth, uh -huh. It was worth it and I'll take it over and over and over again in a heartbeat. Even with my eyes closed as a fetus in the womb, I'll take it. Uh, that's Thank a you. woman with passion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, mm. so Kafu, we're about to end up. Yeah. I'm going to ask you this question because I actually female that comes on the show this question. It has nothing to do with photography. Females, I'm sure you've answered it sort of when we're talking, but I should like to repeat it again. Um, 
Females say it's difficult. Males don't give them opportunity. Males exploit them sexually. They're not able to get to the top. Um, they feel it's a man's world. Um, starting the business, I mean, it's just, you know, one complaints after the other. And like, they make you feel like uh, there's a stop, there's a, there's a stop gap in everything mm -hmm. that the males try to stop and try to dominate in every sector. Mm. But women like you have been to achieve I mean, you're one of Ghana's top five female filmmakers and photographers. And there are other women out there who have been able to achieve like what you have been able to achieve. Yeah. So what advice do you have for women, not just in Ghana, but all of Africa? Okay, um, my advice to any woman out there who is trying to pursue a male-dominated field, don't give up. Don't let what they say bring you down. My main advice is that learn be the best at what you want to do. Be so good that you can't be denied. Thank God for social media now. You don't need anyone's permission to start something on social media. Just That's true. start. Just start with what you have, where you are, with what you have in your hands now. Is it a phone? Start with it. Start somewhere and give yourself that room to learn. Be open for corrections. And study someone who has gone ahead of you be ready to serve at the early stages to build yourself to where you want to go and you'll see the rest falling into place. Be the best at what you do and the world will come after you for it. Alright guys, you heard it from Kafu yeah. Praise herself. Be the best at what you want to do and does open for you like she said. Thank God social media, you don't need any permission to do what you have to do. The opportunities are there. Just keep your head up and you'll make it. All right, Kathy, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, really, I've read so much about you. Really, really have no <laughs> idea how happy I am to, to, to finally meet you. Thank you. All right. Okay, okay guys, we're watching Just for Women in Africa. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Tell a friend who knows a friend about Just for Women in Africa. And we'd like to give thanks to our host, Sia Coffee House at airport. If you're coming to Ghana, it's a nice environment. You can sit down with your family, have drinks, have lunch, have dinner. we also like to thank Holy Kumbacha. Right, you can get them on Instagram. I'll leave the details in the comment sections below. Um, they have various flavors, I think like five. This is Chuna Quail, and this is Tarif. They have apple, they also have pineapple. It's good, it's organic, um, good for your health, boosts your immune system, and helps other things too. All right, guys, so to the next show. Bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you.